So today I'm taking my uh, brother-in-law, Aaron Gentis, out for a little scouting mission here. We're uh, on the edge of some public land, but the same things that we're going to talk about here would also apply really any place. Uh, obviously there's a few things you do differently on public land than what you would do on private land because you have to factor in the hunting pressure. But when it comes to picking likely stand sites uh, based on the terrain and the cover and the sign that's there, that's, that's no different whether you're on private land or public land. So we're going to start our hike and uh, once we get up in here I'll check in a couple of times and we'll uh, hopefully find a couple of spots for Aaron to hang some tree stands. We're going into a pretty big area and I think this one is probably, I'll bet it's at least 1,500 acres uh, somewhere in that neighborhood, maybe a little bit bigger than that. And there aren't any roads crossing this. So what we have to figure out is, you know, basically how far do we have to walk in order to get away from the other people? How do we break down an area this big with all of these ridges? and uh, trying to figure out where the starting point is. There are some ag fields along the bottom. So we're gonna walk those edges first and see where the sign is there. And then we'll, we'll work our way up into the ridges because that's gonna be where the deer are bedded at. Um, and, and being able to find where they feed and where they bed is kind of a starting point for us. So we'll uh, cover these bottom fields and then we'll work our way up into the ridges from there. All right, so we made it to the first little field. And the goal, I mean, I'm not seeing a lot of buck sign around the edge, but the goal is to figure out how many deer are in this area. Uh, you know, Aaron doesn't want to spend his time because he only has so much like the rest of us, uh, hunting spots that don't have much, you know, as far as deer numbers. So that's one thing you can learn right away. Anytime you're scouting a new area is just try to figure out if there's a huntable number of deer here and uh, the easiest way to tell that is to see how much sign there is around the feeding areas. So. Right here, Aaron. We did find some small rubs along the edge already, but we're not super worried about finding necessarily a big buck sign because Aaron's not trying to kill a trophy. I mean, I'm sure he'd be happy to, but wouldn't just, we all, right? Just uh, want to get on the board. Yeah, so he just wants to shoot a deer. So we're looking for concentrations of sign. We've gone maybe half a mile. Um, and I'm sure the further we go, the better it's gonna look. I'm seeing some bigger rubs along here too than what I saw closer to the vehicle. <laughs> You don't have to wear a mask. No masks <laughs> required. Okay. We're socially distant from, <coughs> wait a minute, I just saw, oh, that might be COVID. Um, so the, so now the, the, the real challenge is where do you go to get away from the other hunters? Yeah. And uh, as good as this looks, you know, you could maybe get away with it a few times and just see what happens, try it. You know, Would see you if you enter here from where we entered? Yeah. You would, mm -hmm. okay. Unless you're going to get permission on private land. Um, but then you might have to go up on top because there is ag, ag fields up on top that the farmers are renting uh, from the, the state as well. You didn't see that on the app? Because mm -hmm. nice. you can see the property lines where okay. the state land is. Um, awesome. And you can see that there are ag fields in there within those boundaries. So it would be a whole lot less likely for somebody to come up this valley and then climb up one of these bluffs. So we're huffing and puffing. Uh, we're about halfway up the bluff and uh, we came across a really good trail here. And I wanted to point out something to Aaron on the, the way that the deer move through this kind of country. Uh, they take the path of least resistance. If you look, I mean, there's, you can't tell probably in, in 2D, but it's pretty steep. Um, real nice trail here. And usually when you're walking, the route that you pick that's the most convenient for you is probably going to be the one that has the deer trails on it because they use the terrain a lot like we would. Uh, 
they don't want to work any harder when they're going through this country than they have to. So if you find saddles, you know, in a ridge line, that's where they're going to cross the ridge. If you find uh, more, I would say, gradual slopes, that's where they're going to go up and down. Uh, if it's really steep, they're going to go around those spots when they're even when they're side hilling. You know, they won't they won't travel through that. They're going to go above it or below it. So that makes funnels either above or below. Uh, usually, in this country too, what we see um, is you get about 30 yards in from the field edge there'll be a pretty good trail there too where the deer kind of parallel around the field so when we get up on top here let's see if we can find that there should be a pretty good trail just in like 30 yards in from the field edge where the deer are just kind of you know paralleling the field okay. those can be really good spots too um you know the the idea of course is the deer needs to have a reason to go from point a to point b so during the early season and the late season that reason is they're going from where they bed to where they feed. So during the rut... And they tend to bed... In this country, they bed high. They bed high. Okay. They bed up on these ridges. And then they, they might feed by going out further out on the ridge, you know, to the bigger ag field where we're going to next, uh, up on top. Or they may come down into the valleys, like, you know, the little fields that we were just in mm -hmm. uh, down below. I mean, you can still... If you turn this, you can still see the... You know, those fields down there in the valley. Oh, it's it's pretty cool, you know, the way this is laid out. If it was private land, it'd be really easy to hunt. Real straightforward. Bed high, feed low, kill them down in the valley in the mornings, or uh, in the valleys in the evenings on the food and up on the ridges in the bedding areas in the mornings. So in the morning, you'd want to be up top. Yep. And uh, I think because of the pressure that you're going to run into here, you're probably going to want to be up top even in the afternoons too. But that's where we're going now. We're walking up on top just to see what these ag fields look like that are on the top of these ridges and uh, see if just by climbing, we can get away from some of the hunting pressure. We'll get a feel for that. Once we get up there, we'll be able to tell how many trees have had tree stands in them. Uh, we'll be able to tell, you know, how much access is coming in off the private land because it wouldn't do any good to walk all the way up this valley and then climb this bluff and then get there and have some guy drive his four-wheeler, you know, right up to the edge of the field and get out and start hunting. Amen. Um, yeah. So you want to figure out, like, which of the private properties are being hunted a lot too. So we made up on top of this ridge. We're not out to the uh, field edge yet, but it's really thick out here. And uh, when it comes to good-looking bedding areas, uh, this is pretty good. And there's some a lot of old rubs here, so and some newer ones from this past season. So it, it, how do you tell the difference between an old one and a new one? The uh, the ones that we just came up on, see how the the color of the the wood is more yellow and the bark is more recently scraped off. Uh -huh. Like the one, for example, um, it has an old one and a new one, because you can see like the old scar uh -huh. on the tree. And you can see where just this past season more bark was rubbed off. Uh -huh. and the other one, even the other one next to it, to the right of it, same thing. You can see where it's got the old scar. Plus, you can see where the freshly uh, the the bark has been rubbed off. Uh, so this one, nice, man. yeah. So anytime you can find spots where the deer are using a certain travel area for multiple years, uh, that's a good sign. So seeing old rubs and new rubs in the same place uh, that's a good thing so again i'm i'm pretty much uh bullish on what we've seen up here <laughs> I mean, a little bit of work getting here but i wouldn't be afraid to put a stand up here myself because this looks pretty good so we're gonna sounds good to me we'll keep looking okay yep is this the old or the new this is the new that's the new and then this that, is the new and that's, that's the older no nope. the scar the scar the old scar where it's healed like this is the old scar. Oh, okay. see that? And this okay. is the new where the bark has been recently rubbed. Mm -hmm. Same thing here. Old yeah. scar, there, new from this past season. Nice. So we made it. Made it out on top now. And uh, this is an active, actively farmed area. So that means there's going to be food here. And that's good because if this isn't pressured heavily from the private land, 
this is an awful long ways from the access point. Where we came from. Yeah. Oh yeah. So if you're tough enough to get back here, you could spend the whole day, you know, out along these edges or back on that little point that we were just out on that was real thick that had those rubs. Yeah. You know, and I'm not saying you're gonna, you know, you're gonna shoot some kind of whopper, but if you spend some time here, if you spend some time here, you're gonna shoot a deer. You're gonna see. You yeah. gotta think. There's yeah. gonna be opportunities. And I think you'll yeah. kill one. <laughs> I think I opportunities. Don't. I think opportunities translate into success, and, and I, I have confidence in it. <laughs> so Aaron's pretty excited now. He just wandered off, but uh, we found probably uh, what I would call one of the best spots so far on this property. And this would be, I always try to classify him for him like when we're scouting i was up here maybe 10 days ago or two weeks ago and we found one that i called a five um, this one's probably in the seven range but what makes it so good is, is these two pretty heavy trails that parallel and uh you know you, know, you can't really see it from this angle but uh there the first trail was about 20 or 30 yards in you know from the field edge and this one's about 60 yards in and it's heavier. Comes out of the bedding area on the point and just kind of follows along the slope down below the field edge. Uh, this is where I'd be. And you know, it's not quite as uh, maybe exciting as being out on the field edge where you're gonna see more deer in the distance and, and maybe have a little bit better chance of being entertained. Uh, but this is the kind of spot where you actually will shoot something because the deer are going to travel through here more comfortably, you know, during the day. And uh, there's a lot of nice trees here, plenty of spots to hang the stand. Any wind blowing from the west, which is a pretty common wind that we have, would be coming off those ag fields and taking your scent over this valley uh, behind us. So this would be a very huntable spot, not an easy spot to get to, which uh, is kind of a good thing on public land, but... So we're, we've got a seven on the board. Uh, we're gonna keep walking and see if we can find a higher scoring spot. Looks good to me, but if you think we can do better, <laughs> I'll ride shotgun. We can always try to do better. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we found another train feature to talk about here. Uh, behind us, there's a ditch that runs up out of the main ravine. And uh, the deer don't cross these things everywhere there's only certain spots where they'll cross them it's where the banks going down into the ditch are gradual enough they don't go where it's real steep and deep so if you find spots like the one behind us where they're crossing these ditches those are really good funnels so mm -hmm. during the rut when the bucks are trading you know from one ridge top to another looking for does you know they're in their bedding areas these little funnels on these ditches are really good because Again, like this, yeah, like the one right behind us. Yeah. Okay. So there might be a couple more. The further up the the ditch you go, the better usually because you get a little bit more consistent winds. Because the further down you go, then you get more swirling. The closer you are to the top of a ridge, which is bad. Yeah, swirling is bad. Swirling is bad. So usually going down into valleys, unless you got just the right conditions, which we can talk about. I mean, so this my, is about as far down into the valley as we mm -hmm. want to go? Yeah, I think so. And there aren't a lot of really good trees here anyway. So, uh, but it's just kind of noteworthy, you know, to see what these terrain features are and how they influence the way that deer move. Mm -hmm. um, but mm -hmm. so, yeah, I mean, this was something to look for when you're scouting is, is anytime you're looking at these apps that show the, the contour lines, you can see where they make a sharp bend contour lines. You're like, they'll make a V shape. And where they do that, that's a draw. And usually at the bottoms of these draws, especially in ag country, there's ditches because the dirt gets eroded away by the water. And then the deer don't really, like I said, they don't like to cross those everywhere. They cross them only in certain spots. Mm -hmm. So I've, I've gone into new areas before and all I've done was just walk ditches and find some really good killer spots. Mm -hmm. um, so something to keep in mind when you're scouting. Mm -hmm. uh, ditches are your friend. Sounds maybe good your me. only friend. What's that? So maybe your only friend. Shh, hey man, just want to get on the board. Take them where you can get them. <laughs> That's not turkey. That's deer. That's deer. 
Yeah, real heavy crossing right through there. And you can see above the ditch starts getting steeper and deeper again. You know, and then below, if we look below, is this an area that's where they would bed? Um, typically what you're gonna find, so, so typically what you're gonna find is these ridges that you see out in front. Yeah. See how thick they are? Uh, that's where they're gonna be bedded. So there'll be does or bucks too scattered out on these ridge tops and, and those points, you know, where the, the ridge kind of comes out to an end and then drops down into the valley. Mm -hmm. Those are really like the prime spots out on the end of those points. And there's one behind us and there's one in front of us and then there's this ditch right between them. And then there's this heavy crossing, you know, that we've already talked about, you know, down through the bottom of this ditch. So, so this is where they would be, say like overnight and then in the morning they'd come out to the field? They, op opposite. Opposite, okay. Yep. So they'll feed at night uh, and they yeah, bed right. during the okay. day. Yep. And then when the bucks are going, let's say during the rut from one area where there's a doe or does to another other area where there's does, you want to find those funnels. And that's where these ditches come in because they're usually lie between two ridges because you, know, you got the valley ridge on one side, ridge on the other side, and then the, the ditch in between, you know, with the, with the ditch crossing like this. Killer spots. Solid. So we've walked for how long? Hour and a half? we've maybe covered a mile maybe a little bit more somewhere around there but we found enough to conclude that uh this is a solid seven uh don't know if we found that eight we'll keep pursuing the eight but this is better than what we looked at last time for sure this is they're definitely here the deer are here the habitat is here the food is here the sign is here you know, all things point to this being a really good spot for bow hunting, especially if you're not worried about the size of the buck that you shoot, or whether it's even a buck or a doe. I mean, you spend the time here in these really thick points coming out from those open uh, feeding areas, mm -hmm. you're going to kill something. You know, again, you know, we're a mile from the truck. So what, what are you going to do if you shoot one? Well, I've got my grandfather's old, like, golf cart thing. I was going to maybe try that, but I was hoping to, like, you know, maybe get some tips on that, too. Like, how do, like, what do I do? Do I got to carry it out on the, on the back? Like, what do you do? That's, that's a good question. <laughs> what, do, what, do, well, mean, what guys will do is they'll use those, they're like game carts, and they're like a two-wheel cart with almost like bicycle tires on them. So they're big tires so they can roll over some of these logs. Or you hook it up to like a four-wheeler or something? <laughs> you can't bring a four-wheeler in here. This is not... Oh, yeah, this is this is public. Can't do that. No, you can't do that. So I guess that will be the next chapter will be when Aaron kills one. Maybe he'll have to... Well, first you got to show me how to set up the tree stand super safe because yeah. I fell out of the tree stand. I don't want to do that again. No, we'll do that. <laughs> we'll do that in, in another installment. But okay. Somewhere along the way, you're going to kill one in one of these spots. You, you got to put your time in, and that's the thing is, is that I've I just haven't been confident enough in the place that I have chosen to be patient enough to put in the time and do what you got to do to to actually nail one. Yeah, and this is a spot where you can feel good. Uh, you know, if you sit here long enough, you're going to kill something. I almost put it this way: you're going to get a shot. And that's, that's all I'm here. looking for. Yeah, you know, it's all here. So. That's it for today. Uh, somewhere along the way, I'm going to bring you some more installments with Aaron and his quest to kill his first deer with a bow. And uh, we've had fun today. It's pretty. I mean, I love hiking this stuff and, and seeing this country. And uh, I think we found a winner for you. Thank you, sir.